this is the new Toyota Urban Cruiser Tizer. Now it's no secret that this is essentially a Fronx rebadged into a Tizer. But the question we are asking today is, is this any better than the Fronx? Or in fact, is there any significant difference between the Tizer and the Fronx? But before we go ahead, do hit the like button, subscribe to our channel, and hit the bell icon so that you can stay notified to all our videos. So let's start with the changes on the exterior. Of course, the Toyota logo comes up, but then the real difference is this grill, the honeycomb grill that you get on this car. And I think it makes it look a little bit more mature with the lesser chrome elements. And then there is also this DRL, which you get from the signature Toyota look. On the side, you get these same alloys, the same size alloys, but a different design, which I think also adds to the maturity of the look of this car. Now on the rear, there is only one small change, which is this side housing of the LEDs. The center bar remains the same, but the side housing has been changed. And I think that makes it look a little bit odd, but I don't think that it's such a big difference that it really matters. Inside, the only change made by Toyota is at the steering wheel, where they've done away with the chrome ring and of course added their logo. The seats are soft and comfortable with very good bolstering, though they may be too soft for very long distances. At the rear, there's ample space for your legs, even when the driver's seat is adjusted to my position. Due to its sloping roofline though, the headroom is a different story. I'm 5'10 and there's just about enough headroom for me. This particular variant that we are driving gets all the bells and whistles you expect out of a car in this price range. Head-up display, auto LED headlamps, 9-inch touchscreen infotainment with wireless Android Auto and CarPlay, rear AC vents, 360-degree camera and more. Having said that, this camera quality reminds me of VGA cameras on the early smartphones. It really is just about average at best. The boot space is 308 liter, but you will have to put your back into it to get your luggage out, owing to this high loading lip. Now while driving, the first thing I want to talk to you about is this engine. It's a 1-litre turbocharged engine that produces 99 bhp and 147 Newton meters of torque. Now that doesn't sound a lot on paper, but what you have to remember is that this crossover weighs only 1,030 kilograms. That's feather light in the crossover territory. And that's what makes this car extremely chuckable. It enjoys being thrown around the corners and it builds up speed very fast. And even for a three-cylinder motor, this is an extremely refined unit. Hardly do you make out that this is a three-cylinder engine unless you rev it really hard when the vibrations really filter through. And I'm not sure if you can listen to this, but try. It does make a bit of a sporty noise. Okay, given, because it's a three-cylinder engine, the power really builds up only after 2500 RPM. But when it does, it is a lot of fun. Now, the more I drive this car, the more I feel it is optimized for city usage. The steering is light so that it's easy to maneuver around the cities. There is enough low-end grunt for you to make those quick overtaking maneuvers. And if you keep a light foot, it's a very frugal engine. And it's not just the engine. The suspension too seems to be tuned for low speed comfort. The ride is very pliant. It's extremely smooth over the potholes and bad roads. Although it does make a crashing sound if you do go over them at high speed. And then there is the factor of it being a crossover. I think it makes it a far more practical buy than a regular hatchback. Its higher ground clearance gives you the freedom to go through some of the bad roads in the city without breaking any sweat. And because of all its practicality, it is more suited for longer highway runs than just a regular hatchback. On the straights, the speed builds up very well and its lightweight makes cornering extremely fun. Though be aware, its light steering lacks feel and at high speeds you will experience understeer if you overstep its limit. There is a limit to it but you will have a lot of fun with this car. 
I for one love the concept of a crossover. They give you the dynamism of a hatchback with the practicality of a semi SUV. And it can be a lot of fun when you really want that. At the same time, it has enough practicality for you to go for your long runs as well. I'm starting to like this more than I thought I would. But there are some issues as well. If you listen to all the plastic sounds that this car makes, you know that it's not the last word on quality and expect to hear some rattles very soon into your ownership. In fact, this car has not really done a lot of kilometers, just about 2000 and the switches on the steering wheel are already moving and there's this very light rattle that's already coming from somewhere in the back. I've checked this entire car, there's nothing kept that is rattling, it's somewhere from within the car itself. And that is the downside of a very light vehicle. But on a whole, I really like this car. I like the way it looks, I like the way it drives, I like the fact that it's frugal, I like the fact that it's fun. Now I'm glad Toyota has sent us this manual version because I am really enjoying this engine, this lightness of this car and this very slick gearbox on these very empty roads. But I understand if you're living in the city, I would recommend the six-speed torque converter. It just makes your life a lot more easier. Now before I come to my verdict, let me put the badged engineering dilemma to rest. Maruti and Toyota are interchanging only some soft visual parts simply to keep the costs in check. Any more changes to this car and the Tizer is going to cost a lakh or two more at the least, which is not going to make any sense. So to me, I still think it's a very good deal. And I know looks are subjective, but this exterior of the Toyota I personally find it better than the Franks. I find it more mature and I find it more elegant. At the same time, you get a three year and one lakh kilometer warranty with the Toyota Tizer, as opposed to the two year and 40,000 kilometer warranty with the Franks. If you ask me, I would buy the Tizer over the Franks. And in fact, it's such a lovely city car. I would probably recommend it to anybody who's looking for a car in this price range. Now, what do you think about the differences between the Tizer and the Franks? And also, if you have any particular questions about the Tizer, do let us know in the comments. We will do our best to reply to you.